Good morning. Uh, uh, we, we are here, to, to, um, me and, and Giri, to, to talk about uh, the Linux performance tools, which are, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Arnaldo Carvalho de Mello. I work on the same team as Stephen Rostad on the, uh, at Red Hat, on the uh, real-time group of the Emergy uh, product. And um, we, we work on, on tools that are used to characterize problems and using diff different techniques uh, than what he explained it. He explained about tracing, we, we talk about profiling, about sampling. And, but both tools were, were both have trace and both, uh, and, and also uh, perf, it started on the, on the real-time uh, group, on the real-time group and the real-time patch, and uh, grew to, to be separate projects. Uh, I, I, I'm curious to, to know who in the room already played a little bit with Perf. Okay, so because not, not, today we're going to be talking more about uh, new things, and, and, and for those who never uh, played with, with Perf, there will be uh, some usage examples here and there that should uh, explain, to some degree, the architecture. But basically, we're going to talk about new stuff. And um, so, one of the, one of the first things, uh, the first thing I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk is, is about multiple, uh, seeing uh, multiple events, handling multiple events. Uh, it was always possible for you to ask for multiple events, like uh, please record ev uh, cycles and cache misses, and you could say that you would require, uh, um, you could schedule. The, if, if you had n not enough uh, counters on the P CPU PMU performance monitoring units, you could you could use like that uh, cycles and cache misses. And if there was just one, let's say, uh, performance counter, it would sometimes sample cycles, sometimes sample cache misses. So there would be blind spots, or, but we would not be able to see both uh, being collected at the same time. So in this case, I recorded cycles and cache misses system-wide, that dash A for all CPUs, and for one microsecond. It recorded some perf, perf data file, and uh, if I use that this uh, little no uh, common perf ev list, event list, it would say that on this perf data file, you have events of the type cycles and cache misses. But if you do like that, that new uh, notation, uh, curly braces, circles, uh, cycles, and cache misses, you, you, you are asking the kernel to me measure both cycles and cache misses, uh, and if it's not possible, don't count at all, and, and tell the user that's not possible. But it, usually, the, 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 this thing is, is, is possible, but you could be on a machine with multiple people trying to do profiling, and so one could prevent the other from, from using because uh, they are asking for both at the same time. But then now if we do perf ev list, you're going to see that there are events of type of cycles and cache misses. But if you ask if they are in a group, you're going to say that yes, they are in a group. They are. So now if you, uh, in the past, if you do just perf report, you're going to say that there are samples. There are 88 uh, cycles samples, 78 cycle uh, cache miss samples. And you would be able to press enter, and they would see a view based on cycles or a view based on cache miss. But what we have, and you're going to see this thing if you press it, for instance, for, for cycles. And see the overhead for cycles for, for uh, the, the, the functions, where, what is the, the, the binary, where the, the DSO, where this, this symbol is, etc. But now if you do the, the perf report dash dash group, you're going to see uh, uh, it, it's ordered by the overhead of, of cycles, but you're going to see that uh, the, the, the both events at the same time. So you can now correlate uh, things like uh, this idle routine, 16% uh, of the cycles, is, it's there, and 19% uh, of the cache misses happen there. But, but you, you can correlate cycles and cache misses or other kinds of events. 
uh, it, it, there, there was something else that was done was the uh, GTK interface for annotate, for to do source code annotation. And then you, you as well, on the annotate uh, tool, both on the graphical interface, GTK interface, and on the TUI or on the uh, STDIO uh, out, uh, formats, you can see both uh, the cycles and instructions, or cycles and cache misses, or, or multiple. You can have something like three or four or seven events. And then you just would have more columns on the overhead uh, part. One other thing that was implemented was uh, in perfstat, you, you usually you do perfstat and then you specify which events you want, or you can say that you uh, want the default ones, which is some 20 events, like cache misses and uh, page faults, some software events, some hardware cache events, some uh, hardware events. But only at the end you would receive the information about how many of those events took place on that specific workload. Now you can use dash capital E, I, and uh, say that every 100 microseconds uh, you, you should print uh, uh, the, what you would print in the end, and, and then print a delta from, from the previous one, so that you can feed this into tools like GNU plot or, or something else, or, or basically, Sometimes you, you, you want to, to see the program starting and then the startup pass it. Now you are interested in the events. You don't want to collect, uh, uh, to have all the workload into just one, one statistic. Is there a capital I? Yeah, yeah, I think it's <coughs> capital I. Yeah. And uh, something else in per start is that you now have per socket, per CPU socket, or per, per CPU core. Or uh, aggregation to help find Im imbalances in scheduling, whatever, and you can uh, combine it with interval pr printing. So that's an, an example. You you say uh, that every every second uh, you you're gonna do uh, system wide, and then aggregate per socket, uh, just just the cycles event, while that workload runs. So we will, for 200 seconds, uh, you're gonna be having one second. Uh, uh, printouts uh, uh, aggregated by, by, by CPU sockets. So in this case, the, the, one other thing that's really interesting that happened after a lot of, of back and forth of, of reviewing and uh, changes and reducing the patch size is perfman. Perfman is an alias for uh, perf record and perf report that asks uh, perf to ask the kernel to record, to, to program the PEBS precision uh, event-based sampling uh, facility that's present on recent Intel uh, processors and recent uh, AMD as well. Uh, and it will allow you to, to know, uh, to do memory uh, access profiling. So there are some examples that will show how this work, and uh, it will uh, it will say the the function that that where, where the sample uh, was was taken, and uh, as well uh, what was that uh, what, what was the the, the 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 data address that it was using and in what DSO in what memory area this this DSO is. So the idea is that. You can resolve saying, oh, an access to this variable caused this, this memory access, and the memory access cost was, was this, and, or it was uh, solved uh, by the first level of caching, or the second level of caching, or no, this one had to go all the way to memory, and, and things like that. It right now is working for uh, global uh, variables, but more work is needed to make it work for local variables using uh, the information that's available in the dwarf debugging format so that you could create a map of uh, uh, what is where at that moment in, in time and then you could map back to, to some variable and say, oh, there was an access to this ar array uh, after the uh, uh, element number 2000. 
So if, if you run perfman-t loads, you are asking for uh, profiling memory loads. And then you say dash a again, uh, system-wide for 10 microseconds. If you ask what were the events that were recorded, because th this comment will uh, produce as perf record uh, a perf data fa file. And uh, on, on this perf data file, you have this, this kind of events, CPU mem memory stores uh, in precise mode, in, in, in two levels of, of uh, precision. If you, do the, if you now do perf mem report, if you do uh, perf mem report, it will uh, show uh, a, a detailed view of, of what happened, and then you can see that there is some uh, level one cache hits and uh, level two cache hits or misses or uh, several well, the level in the cache hierarchy that was uh, used on that specific sample. That perf main report basically it's it's calling perf report in mem memory mode and then asking for a sort order of memory the the, the kind of memory access the symbol the DSO. The, the, the symbol uh, for the data address accessed, and so on. Uh, but you can do as well a shorter form like this, asking just for the memory type, the symbol, and the, the variable, the data address that is being accessed. And if you look, at, in some of those cases, this function was accessing a global variable. That, that is the name of the global variable that was accessed, so that's possible. The, the, the other ones are unresolved because probably this was on an area of allocated with some K malloc or some malloc and glibc or whatever. Uh, and and this, uh, some, some of, the, of those will be resolved as we do more work to, to use the dwarf information to, to get uh, uh, this feature in. But this one, uh, it's interesting as well, uh, using. Uh, this is a new feature, but now we are using a feature that was existing since the day one in perf, which is you can specify a different sort order. So you're going to collapse things, not by symbol, DSO, etc., but it will collapse just by the memory access hit, uh, memory access type. <coughs> and, and so f for this workload, which was, so let's say, 10 microseconds of system-wide uh, sampling, 46% uh, uh, was uh, accessing things that were on the level one cache and so and, and so on. So the the machine was lightly loaded. There was nothing happening that much. So most of the things were cached. But now you can see for any kind of workload how this workload is using the cache hierarchy on your on your system. So this is exposing the the PEBS feature through the the the, the perf tools. There is more work being discussed about how to further uh, uh, make use of PEBS, like trying to do data annotation instead of, instead of uh, so you would get a data structure and then say that the accesses for this specific workload are 20% on this field, 20% on this cache line, and 20% on the other cache line. And then you could do things like trying to figure out which working sets inside the data structure are accessed and then move things around to uh, improve locality uh, 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 aspects. So now I will hand to 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 Irjiki that's working on it. He's contributing for for Perf for almost two years by now. I think yeah, he works. Uh, he's going to present himself, but he's doing lots of of this. Uh, uh, he's improving. Uh, lots of the things that we're going to be talking about now, and, and some other things he is, is the main uh, contributor. Okay, thanks. So, hi. Uh, my name is Yuri Olsha. I work for Red Hat, same as Arnaldo, in kernel team. And uh, well, my, one of my uh, duties is to maintain the perf tool in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and I contribute to upstream as well. So I will go uh, through the rest of the enhancements uh, starting with diff. Uh, diff command basically is for uh, comparing uh, the data files that you gather uh, from the record command. Uh, until, until now, we had just uh, had the simple comparison method uh, using just the delta. 
uh, delta computation, uh, what I did, uh, we did the weighted diff and uh, ratio computation, and those computations are based on paper from uh, Paul, Mac, uh, Paul McKinney, differential profiling. And the other enhancement uh, for the diff uh, is that we are now able to uh, uh, compare multiple data files. So far, you were only uh, getting results for two data files. Now you get uh, multiple data files. Uh, just some basics how diff is actually working. So you have, let's say, two data files. What do you do? do you make the intersection of the symbols in the data files. So you end up with some uh, set of the symbols which you can actually compare because they are in both workloads. You have the counts for the symbols so and you make the computation. So now it's the delta weighted diff and ratio. As for the de delta, that's the current one and was until, until recently. Uh, you compute uh, the percentage uh, of the symbol uh, in each data file and just make the delta, just subtract those two values. And this is what you get when you run perfdiff uh, dex c delta. The dex c is the option that let you specify what computation you actually want to do. So you will end up with first file being the baseline and the other file specified uh, having the uh, delta values. So the new computation is weighted diff and ratio. As for the weighted diff, uh, it kind of allows you to assign a value for each workload. Uh, and this value you need to specify for the diff command and it's computed uh, using this formula. So again, they see W diff, specify the weights, and the diff will make the computation for you. The last one currently supported is the ratio and it's the easy one, it's just easy as doing the division of those two uh, counters. So again, they see ratio and you will see the baseline and the uh, ratio uh, of the next file. The other enhancement uh, for the diff is to support uh, multiple data files. Uh, we do it uh, similar as if you have two data files, we say the first data file is the baseline and all the other data files are compared to this baseline. And you can also choose the del delta weighted diff and ratio. So it looks like this. Uh, you basically say perf diff and you specify multiple data files that you want to compare. The first one is the, uh, is the one to be the baseline and the rest is compared uh, to the first one. So you end up with baseline column and column for each data file uh, giving you the result of any computation that you choose. The default is the delta. So here you get the delta computation. Let's say you want to do the ratio for following uh, data files and uh, you want to also sort it based on the column. So you say dash O1 and it will sort you the data uh, based on the uh, column number one. You, you get the column assignment uh, right here so you can play with the results and see actually how it went. So the, the whole idea about diff is that you're gonna run uh, some workload and then you change the machine and then you run the same workload on different machine and you want to know what changed it from, from one to the other. Or you uh, updated the machine and then the performance went down. So you want to know what was that change. Perfdiff right now allows you to see this in different ways uh, uh, to, to try to understand on a breakdown by, by symbol. Uh, we, we are working on other, other stuff as well to, to try to collect more information about the, about the, 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 the machine, let's say, uh, to see if from one version of the kernel that's being tested to the next one, some default changed for some knob and then that, that could be the reason for, for the problem. So, uh, but the, the, the whole idea is, is problem characterization run once, one, multiple times the same workload, changing some, some stuff, and then we want to know what, what changes in terms of uh, usage for, for the symbols.
Okay. Okay. Moving on to another uh, enhancement, and that's the group leader sampling. Uh, so basically, when you monitor a group in a perf, uh, you end up with samples for each event uh, in the group. And what we are trying to do in here is to say, okay, I just want the leader to do the sampling, and the rest of the group, rest of the events in the group, are attached to this sample. So only leader is doing the samples, and the rest of the group just attach the data uh, to the leader sample. You can do it uh, by using the capital S uh, modifier. And basically, it looks like this. Uh, on the left side, you can see that's the standard way. Uh, you specify the group of cycles and the cache misses. And what you get uh, during the uh, workload measurements, you will get the cycle samples separated from cache misses uh, samples. So all those samples will be recorded and presented afterwards. If you, on the other way, specify the uh, capital S modifier, only you will receive only cycles samples. I mean, only the cycles event will actually do the sample. And uh, the cache misses data will be attached uh, to the cycle. So at a comparison, you will get just this number of sample. How you display it? Uh, starting with the record command, you just say uh, the standard group and use the capital S modifier. Uh, for the report, uh, basically nothing is changed uh, because it's the matter only for the recording phase. For the report, you can use the a group modifier that Arnold was talking about that will display you uh, the group together. So you will see, you will get the overhead column with uh, cycles event and cache misses events data. And uh, that's, basically, that's basically it. Moving on. Another enhancement is using the dwarf information, the call frame uh, info from the wharf uh, to get the call change uh, for the sample. Uh, basically, what it means is that for each sample, uh, in the record phrase, you specify minus G dwarf, and it means that for each sample, uh, we will store the user level data uh, from the stack and the user level registers. And that's it for the record phase and for the report. We will use this data, run it through the special library, some unbind uh, library, and it will do the unbind for us and we will feed the IPs uh, to the report and it will be presented as call change. Uh, as for the libraries we are using, uh, currently uh, this feature was done uh, using the lib unwind library. But there is no maintainer for this library in Fedora and RHEL, so we are moving to uh, Elf, Elf Utils uh, package, which just recently got support for this, for this unwind uh, by Jan Kratofiel, and it's in pending review state. And we have the perf uh, support ready, so once it, uh, the Elf Utils is updated, we will, we will release the support for perf as well. The main problem here is that uh, in the past we had a specific register for telling uh, where, what is the return address for, for the current function. So you could uh, efficiently just traverse the string and, and get the call chain. But uh, since this can be used for optimization purposes as well on uh, x86, uh, the distributions just use it. Uh, for, for this optimization, you don't have this register. So you have to do this, this thing to, to get call chains for user space. Yeah, okay. Moving on, uh, another en enhancement uh, is actually how we can use the precise information uh, in perf, how we can configure to use the precise. Uh, basically, for some events, you are allowed to use the P modifier, and uh, you should end up with a much more precise sample, meaning that you will get some uh, more precise values in the registers uh, of the sample. But uh, 
as we have different levels of uh, precise information in different CPUs, uh, this level is changed among architectures and sometimes it's very hard to find out if you can use uh, the P modifier or not. So what we do here, we uh, export this precise level information to the user space and uh, using it uh, whenever you specify the dash P, we will actually uh, use uh, whatever the level of the precise uh, is on the CPU supported, so it should, uh, it should uh, ease, ease the use uh, of the precise uh, modifier. Uh, there was RFC patch sets and, and that's the current state as far as I know. Moving on to toggling events, uh, this is sort of uh, one to have feature. There was one RFC sent by Frederick Weisbecker a long time ago. We have rebased those patches and uh, we are moving to actually send the RFC. Uh, it's about uh, ability to say for some event uh, to trigger another event, meaning like enable or disable. So imagine you would say you would uh, set up one event, uh, whatever event you would like, like K-probe, P-probe, trace point, some F-trace event, whatever, and you would say, okay, this event will enable the cycles event. And then uh, you will configure another event which actually disable the cycles. So this way you can narrow down uh, almost any place, uh, most of the place in the kernel, for example by using k-probes, and now we have u-probes, so we can also use it for user space as well. Yeah, as I said, it was just, it's in RFC. It's yeah, because the, the use case here is uh, for you, uh, when, when, so sometimes yesterday I was talking with Andy Klein, he was talking that uh, he liked this interval printing because he can see that uh, just off, off, just the beginning of the, the workload, there is this spike in some, some events, and then afterwards it, it stops happening. So he, he wanted to somehow discard the, the beginning or, or, or some, some, some parts of, so you could just uh, focus on, on some specific part. And then uh, combining parts of the infrastructure of observability in, in Linux, we, we could do that, like we could insert a breakpoint on some specific function that the user knows that is when the initialization phase ended. And, and, and Having already set, set uh, all the counters that we want are set up, but just disabled. And then at that point, it just flips a bit and then starts collecting from, from that point on. Or, and then you could finish collecting at when all, some other event happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, next enhancement uh, is about how you actually want to specify the non architectural events. Uh, those events are the CPU, uh, CPU bounded uh, events. Uh, it's not like the cycles, it's all the rest, which, uh, rest of the events which are supported by architectures and is different from each architectures or even uh, CPU. There are currently two ways how to do that. Uh, you can use the libpfm uh, support uh, with following style. Or uh, another way is using the alias uh, support using the CPU uh, slash uh, event definition and allowing you to uh, make a list of the events and use it afterwards in, in the dash E uh, whenever, whenever you, you need it. Uh, libpfm was uh, sort of rejected uh, for perf and the uh, alias patch set is in RFC state for quite a long time, so there's no, no big movement, but we kind of uh, need this feature in, in the future, so. The, the thing is, uh, Ingo wants, uh, Ingo being the main architecture, uh, archi architect of, of Perf, Ingo Molnar, and he wants, he, wants, uh, he wants people to try hard to identify events that can be abstracted in a way that this uh, different architecture could have the same sort of visions, like, crossing a 
NUMA boundary it, it should be in, in several, so that the kernel would abstract those things and, and not expose the user to some specific specificities of each architecture. So that, he thinks that by allowing uh, the, the architecture specific names to be used directly by the user, it would be defeating this purpose. So there are people who patch per perf and to use libpfm. I don't know, I think Google does that and et cetera, and everybody can do that. But the, the thing that Ingo Mora doesn't want is to, is to make it so easy to, to get to the uh, actively specific uh, details. That's how I perceive his uh, reason for not accepting this. Oh, another one, Gray7 uh, library. So this library got just recently uh, to the kernel. Kernel tree, it's uh, <coughs> basically backport from trace uh, command uh, made by Steven Orsted. Uh, what we are doing currently, we are trying to sync with the trace command uh, and uh, currently we are trying to uh, make the plugin support for uh, trace point uh, format file. So it will enable us to actually uh, properly, uh, properly decrypt the print uh, format file for functions uh, like this and display the output uh, properly in the perf script. Uh, yeah. Moving on, uh, that's the rest of the features, two of them is uh, focused on uh, <laughs> focused on developer. Uh, developing perf, uh, we are moving our make system to uh, integrate uh, with the KB cable system. Uh, so you will end up with same stuff as you would do uh, when you compile the kernel. So you will have the dot config and you can specify all the feature in uh, kconfig. Uh, we have now support uh, most of the uh, config targets, so you can run the menu config, all config, non config, whatever. And basically, what we try to do is uh, we want to make the config uh, more easy, uh, more visible, more user friendly, and it also uh, helps the separation of the code. So the code is more clear. I have one. Okay. I will show you how the menu config looks like. So basically you can change uh, and choose uh, whatever building command you'd like to have and it will, it will get compiled into the perf or it will be it will be set apart. You can change uh, and check uh, whatever libraries uh, you'd like to have and also you can check the GUIs, you can disable the GTK to GUI, or you can just keep the terminal, uh, terminal info there. It's in RFC state. We are slowly uh, getting there. This was a request by, uh, by people like embedded system developers that wanted to have a minimal tool on the devices just to collect uh, the data, and then you move it to some other place and then you do the analysis on, on, of the perfect data file on another machine where we have the full um, uh, tool or all the, the features. Set. Okay, and the last one is to mention that we are getting better on testing the perf actually. Uh, recently, like one year, we are trying to get uh, as much testing as we can to the perf test command so you can run the perf test and it actually tests not only the perf tool itself, but it tests the perf events subsystem. In this regard, we are just porting the Vince Weaver's test. Uh, he has very large test suite separated uh, from the kernel. And uh, it's very extensively tests the perf events uh, subsystem. So uh, like verifying that we are getting the uh, proper numbers uh, in a very precise way. So, Whenever you run the perf test, you will get the I mean, you can get the overview if you break something or not, even if you are changing the kernel. And 
yeah, that's interesting state and we will send it out shortly and that's basically all I have. Yeah, the, the, the first test, we, we are testing uh, libraries that we are creating to make it easier to write new tools like this perf main or, or other things that are happening now. We also try to, to do things like uh, uh, generate some event and then try to see if the event is detected by, by the interface. We try to, to uh, there are things that uh, we do like getting the symbols from call sims, the slash proc slash call sims, and we get the symbols from VM Linux. And we try to see if both are matching, if, if, if uh, all the symbols are. The symbols that are here are on the other one. So uh, in this regard, we are testing the process that builds VM Linux, that builds the uh, call sims. And uh, there, there is room for lots of other things to be tested as well, like uh, generating a, 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 a deep nest, nested call to, of functions and then checking if the call chains that we collect are the ones that we expect to collect and doing this with the, with the uh, register-based method uh, that for the kernel is possible as of now and using the dwarf as well. So uh, the idea is that a profiling tool that you cannot trust I mean, it doesn't make sense. So we have to make sure that any regression that happens, we create a test and then fix the problem, and then the test, the perfect test will show that this happened. We try to get this thing and then get it together with Git bisect so that we can automate testing to see where one specific test failed. That, that's, that's the idea behind this perfect test, this subcommand of perf. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, uh, that, that's what we had to say. There are m more things happening as well, but these, I think, were the ones that are more in interesting at this point. So, any questions? <laughs> yeah, so, so please play with it, and uh, don't be shy to, to report problems uh, if you... What, what features specifically? All the, like the man is, 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 uh, was recently merged, so it should be on, on 3.9, I think. Yeah, the, the man one. Uh, so several of those features, some of those features are not, uh, that the group sampling, as he said, it's in our RFC state. It's, it's not merged yet. But some of uh, the, the perf man is, is merged already. No, no, no. Perfect scared not not. Uh, it's, it's quiet for a while. It's quiet for a while. We we just try to reduce the uh, the the changes that I did uh, that were done in Perfect Scared were more in terms of reducing the the overhead that it has on, in processing it. But internal changes, not functionality, not, not no new functionality at this point. More questions? So thank you. Thanks.